Phil Lynch up, but he did it, and he laughs at him. Good afternoon, everyone. Russell the West Side Network. Hope you are all safe and well. Happy Friday. We've done another week. Congrats. And we're not playing till Monday as well. So enjoy your weekend off. Enjoy your weekend off. If you're new and here, where the bloody hell have you been? We've just hit, I think we just hit 14,000 subscribers. Um, but half of you now technically aren't subscribers. So if you could become a subscriber, it'd be very nice. Thank you. And while you're there, hit the little like button, hit the notification button so you don't miss nothing as well. Um, and give us a little cheeky comment as well. Whether it's positive or it's negative, don't matter. Don't matter. We take, uh, we appreciate you taking your time. Loads coming up this week, uh, this weekend. We have got, uh, later on tonight, we've got Hammers Headlines. We've also got... Uh, the press conference with Football London. Um, we've also got Irish Tommy on tonight, I think, as well. Then we've got all the stuff ready for the preview coming up to the uh, Monday, isn't it? Monday, bloody hell. Weird having a game on a Monday. Um, but we're going to... We've actually got a Derby fan um, in, in the green room, which will bring Adam in in a tick. Um, and we'll talk about... Uh, Derby, in terms of some of the players we should be looking out for, maybe the players he's worried about, although, to be honest, most of our players are injured at the moment. Um, let's have a quick look in the chat. Um, we have got Helen, good afternoon to you. Hope you're well, my friend. Uh, we have got John, nice to see you. Hope you're well. Um, let me, oh, Mrs. Budden's calling me. Uh, I'm in a meeting. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Um, the voice of reason, that's me. Thank you. Um, Stephen, Trini, uh, happy hammerettes. Uh, Dre. Greenhole Hammers, happy Funking Friday is indeed. Alan, good evening to you. Um, and Toby's in the chat as well. At least West Ham won't be able to ruin my weekend. Indeed, indeed. Let's bring Adam, Adam, uh, the goal hanger, as he's more affectionately known on the, on YouTube. How you doing, man? You all right? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, we're all right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Happy weekend Friday about to you. Start. Oh, board. yeah. For, for once, it's nice, and we don't have to worry about football, do we? Until yeah, until Monday. That's exactly it. <laughs> How cool is that? How cool is that? So let's 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 talk about you know let's talk about Derby. Obviously, we have got Derby on on Monday, and you know to to be perfectly honest, you know after you know, obviously I used to love going to Pride Park, you know particularly when it was uh, obviously when we was in the same league. Things have gone a bit the other way around now, um, yeah. but you're having a good season this year, aren't you, man? Yeah, we're doing pretty well. I mean, at the start of the season, I was I was a bit more reserved. I thought if we can just have a solid season after getting relegated and all the trouble. I thought that will do me mm. personally. Yeah. But fourth in the league at the moment, I think it's about nineteen unbeaten in all competitions. It's looking very good at the moment. Long may it continue. It is. I mean, you know, last one of the last five in a row. It says uh, according to yeah. Google. Yeah, we've won five in a row now. So beat Port Vale last game. Crazy end to the game there, really. Two goals in 60 yeah. seconds and managed to I get saw. three points. Yeah. And, and, and in terms of, and obviously, you know, it's, you know, I appreciate it's, it's, it's you're in your League One now, but, you know, you're, you want, you're, you're one of the big boys there. You, I mean, you and Bolton, actually, look at that. Actually, to be fair, at the top five, yeah. those two, three, four and five are all big clubs, huge clubs in League One, isn't yeah. it? Is yeah. Yeah. Right there, it's, man? It's, yeah, it's that. Like you said, it's it's sort of four out of the big boys in the league that'll be going for promotion. Um, I didn't expect it at the start of the season, gonna be honest. Mm. Obviously, under a transfer embargo makes it a lot more difficult. But we've got the right manager in, the style of football's coming through and it's it's paying off clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's lots lots of things you're saying there which resonate with a lot of the fan base at West Ham at the moment yeah. in terms of in terms of the football and stuff like that. Um obviously, you know, track the the, the the issue obviously when when you ha when you start when you perform well and obviously you know you get people looking at you is some of your players will be and I mean I'm, we were look, I was looking today was it um was it oh I can't remember that was it was it Louis uh, Leeds were looking at Louis and stuff and a few others and yeah. that's the trouble isn't yeah, it you're gonna there's... get you gonna get these players picked off aren't you yeah we've got a lot of players that are playing like reserve football for international sides which obviously makes them a lot more of an attractive yeah. player if they get an international football. I think Norwich wanted our centre-back cash in, I think it's about 19 or 20. In terms of stats, he's right at the top in the division, especially for such a young defender. Mm. Uh, got Louis Sibley, who's always attracted interest ever since he broke onto the scene, I think. Yeah, mm. and his first 
it might have been his second full start. He scored a hat trick, especially as a midfielder. That's yeah. that's big on his debut. He scored, I think, in his first start. So we've got some really good young players. It's it's a credit to the academy, but obviously Derby, we are in League One. We have been for a number of years a selling club, mm. obviously, and especially in the position we're in. But I think under the transfer embargo, it means that we're not too desperate to sell players at the moment because there's yeah. not really going to be any reinvestment into the squad. So it would have to be a good offer, which I think I think is quite good, really. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like it's it's not you're, you're forced to sell them, are you? It's like you, as you said, yeah. you, need, you know, it's like you can. If it was silly money, then you you take it, you know, because at the end of yeah, the day, yeah, like you can't you can't reinvest it though. It's only trouble, isn't it? So, but, yeah. you know, keep it in the coffers, and at least <laughs> when things do sort themselves out a little bit, Peter says Adam must be scared that we can cause an upset because actually, to be fair, <laughs> looking at the league, looking at the form, to be honest, at the moment. I think you can see why ITV are picking it, um, and it's why it's a Monday because it's it's always with West Ham. Anyone, anyone sort of below, you know, the Premier League, any Championship club onwards and downwards, they'll pick West Ham for that game because it's going to be. We've got I mean, we've got no bloody players. All our players are bloody injured, or we, or we sell them. We sell Dawson. Would have played Dawson would have played on with Monday, I guarantee. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's not looking not looking good. Who else should we be worried about from a from a Derby perspective? I'd say it's got to be the experienced players because they're they're probably the players with the most technique at the moment. Mm. Look at David McGoldrick, played Premier League not so long ago. Definitely a class above the champion, above yeah. League One. So I think we're in the championship. Yeah, <laughs> not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet, not yet, Adam. <laughs> and 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 probably Connor Horan. I yeah. quite like Horan, but then you've also got to look at the young midfielder Max Bird, who is quite underrated in my opinion. Completely controls the game especially yeah. at such a young age and to be captain at such a young age. Very good player. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, there's it's obviously there's, you know, he, as you said, he's a bloody good player. And with the likes, I mean, you, they're yeah, not, not parallels, but look at Declan Rice and how Declan Rice is a young captain mm. as well and is central to everything. Max is very much in that ilk for Derby, isn't he, really? Yeah. Yeah, he has been for a number of years now for us, so... I know there's obviously always been transfer rumours around him, especially when Frank Lampard was managing us. There was always yeah. the link to Chelsea there, but it's quieting down in recent seasons, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully. yeah, yeah. I suppose so. Yeah, because obviously, and obviously, yeah, Frank, you know, was there, wasn't he? And then he left for Chelsea yeah. and all that type of stuff. And yeah, he he, he, he fucks up everyone he goes to, doesn't he? he did it to every time. Oh, well. I don't think Derby fans hold Frank Lampard in very high regard. I don't Should think anyone. Promoted. I don't think. I don't think anyone Lampard. does really. West Ham fans hate him. Derby fans hate him. Just, Chelsea fans is all right with, but still they went a bit shit, didn't they? Everton fans, most of them were like, "Get him out of my club," you know. Just, so I'm not sure where he's proved himself as a manager. If I'm going to be honest, that's my opinion. Yeah. With us, we had the squad we had: Mason Mount, Keo Tomori, Harry Wilson, the talent we had in that team to get. So close, and then to pick a lineup that didn't consist of a striker in a playoff final, and then to bring them on and we score a goal straight away. It, that that that's that's my biggest problem. Frank Lampard is Budgie asked, right Budgie asked, would you welcome him back? Not by the sounds of it. No, not not really. I mean, <laughs> we had some great times that year. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if you don't get promoted, it's not success, is it? But, Especially well, particularly, if you get to the playoff final. Exactly. Oh, we've done that. Hey, oh, it's, the, it's the worst way, isn't it? It's the worst way. Yeah, playoffs. I still have. I, I, I love, love the playoffs, love the semis, but it's the final because it's like if we we we've we've, had, we've won one and lost one. Oh, so we've won two and lost one, and um, yeah, for me it was like it. it it was a strange. I mean, I still have. I still suffer from PTSD because of the uh, when, we, when we lost the Crystal Palace back in two thousand and three, um, and I still ate. I can't stand it. Still, that's why I still ate Palace to this I've, day. I've lost count of how many playoff campaigns we've had in the last ten years. And yeah. not compromised. I think there's about five in there or something like that. A bit too many for my liking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Question from GP: Which one West Ham player would you like at Derby? Wow, okay. It's quite right. an interesting question. I mean, all Based, of them. No. Yeah, no, don't, don't <laughs> Apart from Declan Rice, you can't have Declan Rice because he's going to go to Arsenal, isn't he? So there we go. So who would you have? I've always I've always been a fan of Antonio. Obviously, I know he played for Forest. Yeah. So he'd be, oh. he'd be a great story. I, love, I love Antonio. I think he's a great a great player. Definitely. Seen his development from, from correct right back or right wing back going forward. Definitely a lot more. 
it's a funny one. Even... It's a funny one, Van Antonio, because like he's 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 had a. I mean, to be honest, he came out yesterday on his footballers podcast, basically saying, "Oh, I might leave," uh, or you know, the offers offers been there, um, but uh, but yeah, I just don't. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. This uh, for all these clubs like Chelsea and Wolves and and and, and various others have been looking at him this season, and I, I don't know what they've been watching. Honestly, he's like he's like he's he's been absolute gash all season. But um, but yeah, I know he can be, but he has that unpredictability. And you can have him, you can have him. Go, okay, you can have him, you can have him. Yeah, no, he's um, he's unpredictable. He may well start on Mon on Monday. I don't know. We've got we obviously we we, we sign a player and he plays twenty minutes and then he's injured for four weeks. Uh, in Daddy Ings, but he couldn't play there. He's cup tied. Um, but I think Anta, I think we might. You might see um, one of the young lads, um, Divine and Barma, might maybe maybe starting on Monday. So it'll be interesting to see. There's some questions. What have we got? Here? Um, was it the the appreciate fans more? Most of the fickle fans we have short memories. Oh, Trini, okay. Trini loves Antonia. That's why. Um, do you think? Do you think uh, Derby will rest many first? Yeah, because obviously you know you're riding high in in the league. Yeah. You know, is this a distraction? Is this a distraction for your your league campaign? It's difficult to say because before before we were on this unbeaten run, it was a, it was a couple of games where we were unbeaten. I thought play first team in the cup, mm. get a decent cup run, maybe get to the fourth or fifth round, and I'll be happy with that. Obviously, play Barnsley in the last round, who are going to be in the playoffs come the end of the season. Yeah. So it was a difficult test, but we absolutely hammered them three 0 We didn't really look challenged at all, and it was it was a case, and we did rest players. So I think. I think we will rest one or two players, but they'll, they'll be the majority of first teams. Obviously, we had Liverpool away in the cup. That was the last game we've lost back in the League Cup. And we lost that one on penalties. Obviously, don't get me wrong, all of our players were very fired up for that one. So we performed very well. And obviously, Liverpool rested a lot. But I think we'll start quite a few first team players because at the end of the day, under a transfer embargo, the youngsters are the first team players yeah, yeah. They have been for the last couple of years. So. Yeah, so the, it, there'll probably be quite a lot of first team players in the lineup. Yeah, I can imagine. But also, I mean, as you said, it's it's. I mean, you play Monday. I think you got Malcolm home on the Saturday, and Malcolm are like in the bot like bottom four, aren't they? So mm. you'd yeah. fancy your chances there. Um, and and I think because you've got almost a week, there's no travelling. You could, you know, it's it's about momentum. I think that's with West Ham. That's all about momentum. Mm. It's about I think where we can, we'll try and rest as many as we can because we're afraid of them getting getting injured um because you've even got a day to get a replacement really don't you um but yeah so it's a, it's a strange one i think it's going to be really interesting we asked the we asked like the the subscribers to pick their 11s and we pick our 11 and stuff so we, we haven't recorded our one yet but i think it'd be, it'd be quite interesting to see different opinions because i i'm all up for keeping momentum going let's keep mm -hmm. as being as strong as possible let's not you know rest too many but we're uh we're in a perilous position at the moment. Speaking of a perilous position in your in, in your league, obviously, you know, Forest Green Road was big Duncan Ferguson's there now, isn't he? Yeah. That that Gosh. was a strange appointment. And Very strange out. appointment. Did not see that one coming at all. Nah, the jolly the literally the jolly green giant as he's gone to Forest Green, hasn't yeah. he? But uh yeah, strange one. But it just shows, you know, the, the calibre of that league, you know, um, you know, in terms of mm. you know, having having someone that, you know, I mean, it's his first appointment, really. But you know, yeah, a lot of Everton fans wanted him in Everton to come in, and instead of maybe yeah. Deitch who's coming in, you know, similar, similar sort of type of character to Deitch, you know, sort of no nonsense, but obviously understands the club. Yeah, I think it's a really strange appointment, but particularly the picture because, like, when, when like the, the the owner of of Forest Green looks like he should be in an eighties boy eighties like boy band. Um, he was dressed up like he looked like Duran Duran. So check it out; it's quite funny, and he looks really strange, like juxtapositioning where, you know, Duncan Ferguson's yeah. big no nonsense, and this guy's like a bit more flamboyant. And so, uh, no, it's going to be uh, interesting. What do you think? What do you genuinely? What do you think is going to happen on, on Monday? I, I think there's going to be goals. If I'm going to be honest, I think it will be quite an open game. I don't think it will be very cagey at all. I think it might be a bit more even than we predict. But like I've said, there's, I think there's going to be goals. Whether Derby win it, I think, is a case of who West Ham start, if I'm going to be honest. Whether yeah. that Premier League quality is there present in the squad. I think that's the main deciding factor for me. Because at the end of the day, it, it is Premier League versus League One. I can, I can, I can love my players as much as I can. But at the end of the day, it's the Premier League quality, isn't it? So 
I think it just depends on who West Ham start, really. Yeah, I agree. But I think actually, if I mean, if you if you maintain that same base of players that have been playing the last five, won the last five in a row, then the momentum, the crowd, you'll get a fair crowd as well there, won't you? What's the crowd yeah. been like this season? Not been too bad, I think. Obviously, the last season, everybody knows what we went through. 21 points deducted and all that. It was, mm. yeah, it was a difficult season. Um, but this season, I think we've got over 20,000 season ticket holders It came out. Brilliant. I mean, we played Bolton recently, got 30,000 in that home gate, which I think was the biggest, biggest in the EFL bar, Sunderland, obviously, mm. that many days you get in. But I think last I heard was a couple of days ago, there were 7,000 tickets left in the Omen. So I think it would be about 25,000, 27,000. Yeah, for a, mon- for a Monday be, night. For a yeah. Monday night, which will be pretty good, to be fair. Yeah. But also, I mean, it's not, it's, I think the, tra- I think, I, I think sometimes the trains are buggered up going into, coming out yeah. of London. Well, I, as well, well, I live in Leeds, so it's, it's even more difficult for me <laughs> now. <laughs> God, yeah, cause you have to sort of come down and across a little bit. Yeah. I have to come down, yeah, and then across it. I used, well, I'm just at uni, so that's the case of it. But it doesn't matter. I'll travel for the games. Fair play. That that makes sense. Why I'm that's why you're up. That's why you're up at yeah. twelve. It makes sense being at uni now. It makes perfect sense now, Adam. But obviously, yeah. you know, on the on the YouTube side, obviously, you know, you do a lot of your you do your, your derby vlogs and stuff like that uh, for Goal Hanger. Um, that, that's your channel in it, and it's it's really fun. I love it. It's really cool. It's really it's a real like. You know, I think sometimes it's like you, it's it's about you know you do like the the vlogs and that and you know that's what you're known for, which is great, and and you must enjoy doing it as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the vlog started off just watching people who did vlog. I think it was a West Ham vlog I watched first by like Spencer Owen, something like that. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very big YouTuber. I just enjoyed yeah. that, and that was a couple of years ago. So started doing my own, and I've changed over time, and now it's. No, it's more about it's more about just capturing the uniqueness of every game, really. Well, it's particularly, what I quite particularly the Port Vale game the other day, wasn't it? That was yeah. Mental. I mean, that was a great game, and yeah, it was just superb to go to. And it, I just enjoy doing it. I guess there's, there's been many people who've done derby videos over time, and it just seems like I'm the I'm one of the only ones who's left. Silly <laughs> enough to make videos. We're the, last, like we're the last person to leave Pride Park. Please switch the lights off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. So, I don't know. Pete's, Peter Peter Chelsea has asked, uh, why are you a Derby fan? What's, what's your story? Well, there's a, a story. I'm, I come from Burton, which is obviously a town about 15 minutes next to Derby. Obviously with their own team, Burton Elm. But my mum and dad are big Derby County fans. They've been going for many more years than I have. So, like always, either support your local team or support the team your parents support. So, that was the first game I went to when I was about five. I think we lost that shock. But that was it. Been going for about eight years now, home and away. But I've been Fair going play. to watch Derby for about fourteen years. I think it is fifteen years now. Fair play, mate. Fair play. I think it's. I think it's a, a credit that you know that you're you're still hanging around, mate. Honestly, it's good. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. No, it's it's what I said. I think I think it's. Uh, I was reading a, a, a Twitter conversation someone was having about play about why you join your club and why you become a fan. And I think similar to West Ham, and it must be the same for Derby. You know, a lot of play, a lot of fans never pick to become a West Ham fan. And the same that maybe a lot of Derby fans don't pick to become no, was, a Rams it fan. It was chosen for me. I think. Yeah. I think I came home one day, and everybody at school was talking about the big clubs. It must have been a big game, Man United, Liverpool, or something. My parents said, "Why well, you not being a Man United fan?" <laughs> so that that was it. There was there was no choice, and I'm glad there was no choice really. Yeah, it's it's character building, particularly the last couple of seasons you've had, mate. It's, it's character building. Yeah, right? yeah. I think I think at the end of the day, I I wish I wish Derby all well for the for the season just after Monday. That's it. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. No, I wish West Ham all the best just after, <laughs> after Monday. Monday as well. <laughs> and and stay in touch, Ad, mate, because I think you know we good. Yeah, day, no, I think we have a good we have a good fun yeah. and uh, yeah, and, and feel free to pop on any time, man, because we it's always. At the end of the day, it's dominated YouTube and you know, on our channel and all the others, dominated by the Premier League stuff. And actually, there's yeah. there's another seventy two clubs around there. Do you know what I mean? I don't think they get yeah. enough. That's definitely, so definitely what you find out for sure. Since since we've gone down, you, you make you make a lot more new friends and all that. And yeah, yeah, definitely, man. 
definitely, man. Yeah, I mean, it's always it's always a good game, West Ham Derby. I remember. I mean, some yeah. some people put some chances. It's, it's you know we won five. Scott we remembers winning five. But Nobby Solano cracking. Oh, Nobby Solano, great yeah. player, great player. Great um, player. And Igor Stimac, obviously, he played for both. Um, yeah. Big Igor, big fan of Paolo him. Paolo one chop. Oh, Paolo one chop. Oh. Tell me about it. Loved Paolo one chop. My brother, <laughs> my brother and sister, they were young at the time. They used to call him Paolo Lamb Chop. There we go. Little, <laughs> a little, a little, a little insight into the Budden household. But that's what we used to call. <laughs> Scott thinks it's going to be a replay. If it's a replay, you come back on. Yeah, exactly. If it's a replay, you're yeah. back on, mate. We'll get you back on. Don't worry, buddy. Yeah, no. <laughs> go on, you go and you go and have. Well, you might. Well, you're a student, innit? So you're probably just you're probably having your breakfast now, innit? Ten to one. Yeah, and you just rolled out now. <laughs> Pot noodle. There. I've been there, man. I was I was at Loughborough, so I was only down the road to you, man. Yeah, so I know exactly. Yeah. Plenty of good nights out in Derby, that's true. I now if I remember my mate went to Derby and at the time they had this this stat where I think they they I know you at Leeds, but yeah, but but Derby University, they drank something like five percent of the UK's consumption of vodka. Or something like that. I think that is true. I've heard that start or something like that before. And it's the biggest. I think think Derby University had the biggest bar, student union bar, or something like that as well. But anyway, there we go. But you're you're at Leeds, so that made no difference, didn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Don't make any difference to me. (laughs) All right, man. I'll let you go, man. Take care. I'll kick you out. So don't worry. No, thank you. Cheers. Take care, Ad. Cheers, man. Oh, good old Adam. That was Adam from uh, from Goal Hanger. Check it out on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description afterwards. Top man. Uh, when Russ was a student, the wheel hadn't been invented. Unbelievable. Uh, it is a good stat, isn't it? It is a good stat. Um, Derby, some great players. I mean, you know, one chop. You know, we, we spoke about Eagles. Dimatch, big West Ham fan. Uh, well, not West Ham fan, West Ham player, but he does follow, still follow West Ham. And Derby as well. Still follows them. You know, Jim Smith and you know, some great days. I remember Pride Park was, you know, we'd always have a good game there. And uh, really nice of Adam to come on um, and uh, and have a chat. It's, as I said, it's it's Have You Say Friday. Um, I want to, it's, it's all about Trini because Trini's having, Trini's talking about, um, Chinny's talking about what's his face uh, about Antonio, and I, and I, I agree totally what you mean, mate. Uh, a player's character career is not based on one season. Unfortunately, it tends to be because if that's the case, then there's so much haters for Suchek as well, and he had a really good season. And and unfortunately, same as the manager as well, isn't it? The manager, same principle. Unfortunately, it's a neat, you know, it's a results business, and if you're not scoring goals, you're not putting, you know, if you're not if you're not winning games, then people. You know they have they have money in the bank, but I know I understand totally. If he stays fit, we have to play him. He's the only one fit. I totally agree, man. I totally agree. And I think there's, I think his comments yesterday. It's there's a couple of times now where he's he's, he's, he's things he said at the, on the podcast have ruffled feathers, and I don't know how it works in terms of getting things signed off. Surely anything that he says, same as Callum Wilson should be signed off by the club because he's, he's uh, you know, it's he's, he's the same that if we didn't interview the next play, a uh, current player, that would have to go through probably the club before it, it went live. So I just don't see how stuff like that gets into the public domain. Um, he don't make, he don't, he don't help himself in terms of his comments, in my opinion. Now, again, everyone, you'll have a different opinion and, 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 and I do, I'm sure. Um, but uh, yeah, if you listen to what he says, he's proud, but probably not the brightest spark. Yeah, I mean, he did crash his car, Lamborghini, wearing a snowman outfit over Christmas, didn't he? Two years ago, um, proud. I mean, eight, eight, he's been there almost eight years now. Um, till this one, he's 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 earned respect, good luck. He has, and 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 it's sort of his his, his position has contradicted himself. You know, for the I mean, all last year he was saying, "I want someone to come in, I want someone to come in and challenge me." Now someone's come in and challenged him. He doesn't want to stay. He's almost like, "Well, I want to be playing first team football." You didn't say that beforehand. He didn't say it beforehand, so it's like, you know, to be fair, he's had a clear run for the last three seasons, really, without a proper striker. Now he's got Scott Macri, now with Danny Ings in as well, and possibly one more before Tuesday. Um, you know, he, I mean, the fact is he's not going to go anywhere this summer, this January now, is he? Because as you said, as as, as Trini said, he's our only you know, fit striker, really, without having to go into sort of like looking at Divine or someone like that, for example. It's... um. It's it's a, it's a strange one. It's a strange one. I never really understand the timing of these things. In all honesty, um, let's get some comments. Uh, can you say the G word on here? What G word? 
afternoon. Um, most importantly, Russ, did you meet my ch my mates Chip and Dale? Ah, oh, Scott. Oh, did I not mention I went to Orlando? Met, met, met a subscriber. It was, quite, it was absolutely amazing, mate. Uh, Russ, if the season ended today, who would win your Hammer of the Year? Oh, good question. Uh, Declan Rice is too obvious a quite an answer. But to be honest, consistently, if you look throughout the whole of this season, if I was looking at my scores, Declan Rice always has averaged the highest score. I think if the season ends today, I think he would have to win. But for me, I think in the season, I could see Naif. If he's if he remains unfit, it remains not unfit, remains fit. I can see now challenging. I really could. I think he's. Um, I think he is gonna be one of the top five centre backs in the Premier League. Generally, do I think he's amazing. And Terry Tim, unless uh, well, I think eventually I can see it happening. Uh, not always what you say, but how you say it. Totally agree. Seems the club have given him permission to talk to other clubs. No, by all accounts, Mark. Um, he he said they there were talks, and we know there have been talks. We know that Wolves put in an offer um for him um originally it was denied but and you know because it wasn't an official offer at that time and then they made an offer apparently for a loan deal which west Ham turned down and then apparently everton put in a, a uh, had a, a, a what's it called um a request for availability whatever they call it um and then Chelsea had a loan deal. They tried to put a loan deal in. So Newcastle apparently were looking at him as well. Um, I mean, you know, he's in terms of what he brings, he brings something unique that only probably Adama Traore has in the in the in the Premier League in terms of that pace and power. This season he hasn't done it. He hasn't done it this season. So you know, maybe people think they can get the old Antonio back. Who knows? The clear out is starting before the summer. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of players leaving. Uh, we've got uh, five um, five contracts up, isn't it? Uh, Sufau, um, Sufau. Oh, I had them all written down. I'm going to do a show about it in terms of the... the Because, uh, yeah, Fabianski's got... Uh, he finished the cop, but he's got a year option. On top. Questor obviously signed a new a new deal um, to give him another year. Oggy, you know, there's going to be a lot of change. We have Dex saying he's leaving, and now and well, Dex always wanted to leave. We we we're not you know that that I mean that's the last three years we know that when we know as fans that he's gonna leave because he's probably too good to stay here. Um, but uh, Antonio is the strange one. Like many aging players, when they reach early thirties, they need to play their physical. All of them, I totally agree. Um, I totally agree, Trini. And actually, you're right. It's the way you you say it. It's it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And I, and I agree. I think Antonio is even more so because of the way he he's he's so big physically. He does look like he he blows after twenty minutes, but it's because he's carrying probably twice as much. Christ, it's like you know, if me and my mate who's a, who's a stick, Tommy Taylor, you know, we're the same age, but I would because of my weight compared to his weight he could walk twice as much as me and i'm you know and, and that's the same thing with him he has so much bulk that you're probably right he can't play he needs to play um but yeah uh to be fair we w who would want to come to us with a rotten injury record but others it's, it's it's not we haven't this injury record isn't something that we've you know we we sprinkle on players it just happens it's just happened and i don't get why it's happened <clears throat> And you know, originally it was because we were, we were at Chadwell Heath, now at Rush Green. But it's not—they're not doing it in training; they're doing it during the game. So, I just don't understand how we keep getting players injured. Look at Chelsea. Chelsea's injuries are astronomical. Then they cannot go and spend two hundred million pounds play. Have you heard about the chat? We're going to talk about him at five o'clock tonight. Uh, uh, Mikola Milankovic. Uh, we spoke about him before, but we're talking about him again. Unfortunately, the bottom line is. The bottom line, because Scott Venn says so. Um, that's a wrestling reference for anyone. Um, Mick is simply not good enough now. All things come to an end if he didn't play uh, and would still be playing for United. I, th I think Antonio's role in the club is different than it was a year ago, six months ago. It's not now for me. His role is... I think he should be put on the wing. I really generally do. And and um, we had David Connolly on on um, on Wednesday night. Check out really really fantastic interview, with David. Um, and I think that's the case as well. Paqueta and won't be here next season if we even if we stay up. Says Peter. Uh, I I don't agree, but that's your opinion. Uh, Antonio has been a great servant. He's an all time. Yep. Good luck to him if he does go. Totally right. Um, no. 
ham of the year so far. Probably going to be the medical team. Jillings. No, we're not talking about the man who shouldn't be named. Uh, you're right, but the disrespect for somebody short sighted, but typical uh, from somebody short, but typical of the modern FIFA generation. Oh, fans, says Trini. Wow. But yeah, I understand what you mean. You know, I mean, I mean he has been a great servant for us. Great servant. As, as, as you said, top Premier League goal scorer. To be honest, three probably about three and a half seasons ago he was nowhere near it then he had a bit of a purple patch when Moyes moved him up into a set more of a set of forward um and had that sort of great run and this season he just hasn't looked at he's looked he has looked disinterested you know um and i think uh, do you know what i think it is training now i think because we're comparing him to skarmaka and even though skarmaka we've, we've seen a few appearances from him he's shown me enough to so show, show what a, what a, what a out and out forward is Mikhail was never a forward as as Adam says you know he started a right wing back right wing da, 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 and eventually went into this forward position um but still his natural instinct is to go wide whereas Skamaka stands and stays in the middle he drops that deep to get the ball because sometimes he likes to play a 10 but you're comparing the two and it's just the fact that he's playing as a foot and I think now you come you're comparing him where he had no one to compare against I think before and needs to go somewhere else to give him more fire in his belly probably you're right Probably right. Maybe he's maybe he's up to it. Um, so if Moyes didn't keep us up, he will surely go. I didn't, don't see us signing another striker. And Cornet close to returnings and Scott Macker was close to return. They will go with what they have. Well, I think it's based on whether, by all accounts, Ings is having had an injection on his knee, and I think they're waiting for the weekend to see the prognosis and see if that's improved it. And if it has, I think you'll be less likely to see a forward come in um, because he's. Yeah, as you said, with Corne coming back, um, for how long? Who knows? Um, but with Corne coming back in, it may mean that we can play a bit. We can play with Corne uh, in a forward role. Obviously, we can play Bowen in a forward role and put Corne onto the right if need be as well. So there are options. But you'd be right. Uh, I was, uh, I was more of a, um, I was like the water carrier. I was more like a, you know, Hayden Mullins type character. You know, you, d- you don't know how good he is until he's gone. Um, in my mind, the other thing, it's if you. Is that what you do? It's not what you do. It's the way that you do it. Um, how many more youth team players will leave this window? Now, Greenidge is something that... Because originally we were linked to him going out on loan. And now he's gone to permanent. He's not that... Good. Personally, having seen a lot of... Having seen quite a bit of the 21s. Because um, he was playing quite a few of the 21s this season as well. He's a right player. But I, I can't, you know, nowadays, to, I mean, we've had this discussion before, I think to break into the first team, you've got to be upper echelons because you can go and buy someone from France who's got 50, 60, 100 games under their belt who's the same age. And that's the way football is. That's, that's the way football is, unfortunately, now. I know we'd like to see players come in, but maybe, and, and, and Gates did a really good show on um, they did the, the, the big debate just before uh, we had David on the show. And um, he spoke about, you know, are we glamorizing play our youth team players? And maybe we are, but actually, they're you know we've we've always had a, a a thread of a conveyor belt, and sometimes that conveyor belt is a bit slower. Sometimes that conveyor belt is a bit faster. It really depends around the particular age groups. Now, I think Greenwich. I think it was oh he's gone, another player's gone. He wasn't that good. I don't, he was never going to really break into the first team. Uh, in all honesty, if it was someone like Ollie Scarls goes, or divine went to colchester he's gone to colchester he's gone to a league two side it's not like he's gone to bolt not boldly one it's not like he's gone to brighton or he's or he's gone you know somewhere he's gone to a league two side which maybe he's level. i mean you know i'm i'm gonna um do some stuff looking at previous like golden youth generations at west ham and, and see and just to, just to see you know is it just where we're now as a stepping point or is it always been the case but we're seeing things in different eyes now because of you know we're not doing as well as we like to do um and you know going back to that 99 side who won the fa cup yeah they had carrick they had cole richie garcia to some extent but then he even dropped down he played a few games at west ham and dropped down stephen byles did the same thing adam newton he made maybe one appearance if that um and so it's always it's always been that way but anyway uh we actually still we, sh- we actually should not be relying. Totally agree. Uh, why not Antonio and even Skamaka and Ings up top? 
Uh, well, they're injured at the moment. Um, he's no more than an impact sub now. Looks like Deitch is going to be. He does indeed. I agree. He's a natural centre forward, but scoring and um, being our top and not being should get. Yeah, no, totally, totally. And and the fact is, he's he's made. He he was pushed made to that position, and he made it his own. Um, arguably, you know, if he was a centre forward from from birth, so to speak, he may well have have twenty goals in his name at West Ham. I think a lot of fans are too critical. My powers and rates him. A lot of players do. I mean, you look at AC Milan want him. Uh, Napoli are looking at them now. Um, I mean, Napoli will probably be the, the forerunners because they've got Raspadori already, and that's his old player. Um, Moramba and Scars in talks with Sunderland. There we go. Looking to book Florida. Looking for uh, oh, the Tron. Oh, that rise the uh, rise of distance was good. Guardians of the Galaxy was my number one ride. Very good. But we went to Universal as well. Did you watch Earthy the under 18s? Looked to, yeah, that's what I mean. He's a good guy. Uh, Clayton as well. Some good players there. Um, uh, even know what he did. He did. He did. Um, we've been known as the Academy for years. Sadly, we're now seen as the comedy of football, says Rob J. There we go. The comedy of football. Um, right. Uh, we'll, yeah, exactly. So he's the under 23 coach. You're, uh, that, that's, that's why that's happened. Um, and, 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 you know, so he, and so he's trained him, but then he's gone in, he's gone to a league two side. So, it's not a random, you know, we've always had a good business and a, and a good sort of setup with Colchester. It's only at the A12. It's a nice stadium. It's on the side of the A12 just before you get to the zoo, if anyone is interested. Um, but it's on the A12, just like literally there. Wow. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how many games he plays. You know, I mean, I mean, you look at things like, you know, we said we look at people like Reese Oxford. You know, and go back. We had it. We did a we did a piece with Potsy and and Robbo and Kevin Keane and, and Kenny Brown talking about players who didn't make it, players who, who, who what they thought would have made it. Reese Oxford. The trouble is now with players, is they get it's the agents, it's the agents. You look at that was the issue with Perkins. Perkins wanted a lot more money than West Ham were going to offer him, and we we had some yeah you know, sort of a wage structure for the youth, and then it happens. Um, you've got, for example, you know, and that, I think that's sort of the issue of Ashby. Ben, you know, so, and and actually go and watch that deadline day, you know, on thing on uh, Sky um, documentaries. They, a lot of the agents talk about that. It's really interesting. Um, but you, people find their level. Not everyone in the youth team is going to be playing in the Premier League. I mean, even Josh, Josh Cullen had to go to Anderlecht, play a few years there, and then, then go to Burnley. And he went. He only went to Burnley because Vincent Company went to Burnley, and now he's playing really well for Burnley. He's found. The, you know, some players have to leave to come back, um, and 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 maybe one day Josh might come back into West Ham. You never know. Um, two fat to get the hack ride. Right? Joe and Flo went on it and said it was great. There we go. Apparently so. Two. I was too fat. If we were a champion side, we would use our youngsters more. Think that's about is a yeah. That is totally the point, Papa. That is totally the point. We're in the Premier League now. Um, you think when we went down at that championship side, well, when we had David Connolly on, um, we went down and we had the likes, it started off with the season, the likes of Repka and, 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 uh, Defoe and David James. And by the end we had like Nigel Rea Cokers in there, Joby McEnough's. And then we had, you know, real sort of youngsters. Um, you know, the season we went up, we had Elliot Ward and, um, Anton Fernand as our centre back partners. And the similar thing. You know, we, when we went down in and we went up in 2012, yes, you know, Big Sam did bring in the likes of Kevin Nolan and people like that. But we still had people like Jack Collison. We still had Mark Noble in there. We had, you know, we still had, we still had a number of youth team players in there as well as the likes of Winston Reid and stuff. And I think it's not just the fact of division. We, I mean, look at, but even look at Burnley. Burnley, yeah, they've got, you know, if you look at their youth side, a lot of them are players he's brought in from Belgium. And, and Peter, they've got uh, Cullen came across from Anderlecht, you know, so it's not just West Ham, you know, again, if you look at, I don't know, look at someone like, uh, look at Chelsea, you know, he, Connor, Connor Gallagher's not really getting much of a look in Mason Mount's not getting a really, Reese James is granted, but the rest, Chalibur occasionally gets a game. You know, uh, Arsenal may be an exception. You know, you got Bakisania, you got um, Smith Rowe, who's not getting loads of games, but he's but he's he's, he's there with thereabouts in the squad. Um, you know, Liverpool, maybe Liverpool with Harvey Elliott, maybe Nate Phillips isn't getting much of a run in there at the moment. Um, so I think it's in. I think it's 
endemic of the of the Premier League. Um, get Timmy Mallet on. Oh, I used to work with Timmy Mallet. Used to work with Timmy Mallet once. Um, I do. I do. I know Timmy. I do know him. Unless your man said you'd have an embarrassment of riches on the bench, indeed. Potts has done well. He does done well at Luton. And you know, you look at um, Elliot um, Elliot Lee. No, Ollie Lee. Is it Ollie or Elliot? One of them's at uh, at Wrexham now, isn't he? Uh, did you do Discovery Cove? We didn't do Discovery Cove. No, we didn't. Um, well, it was a bit funny, I'll be honest. Can't blame Scott Macker. We didn't create enough to point the finger at our forwards if that's killing us. We all look at the yep, and we think they, they look great, but bearing in mind, that's it, Happy Amaret. And because they play in their own age group, they develop physically different. Skill wise, they're on the they're probably on the same level as 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 any other player. But you're right, they're playing with their age group. You know, that conveyor belt of of players that we would get through the academy came through the old combinations league set up. So they're playing with seasoned pros. They're playing against people coming back from injury. So they they learning. We we've had we've had Izzy Ikupen on before and we're talking about and he was saying that, you know, he never made one appearance at West Ham. He won the cup in ninety nine, the FA Youth Cup, never played for West Ham first team. Um but he'd played reserve team and he'd learnt so much, you know, next to Ian Pierce or Stuart Pierce and stuff like that. And that's it. Um uh yeah, they loved it. They loved it. I was just too fat. Get Michaela Strachan on. Uh we don't know Peter, but we have to assume they know they won't be cut cut it for us indeed. Have you, no, I haven't I haven't seen the Beast of Hornchurch for a while actually. Maybe someone's done it. Um Moyes has to try them. Uh it's been a crime. He has not, then itself makes it clear even if he should stay up. He's limiting the squad's pro- progression. I think partly I partly agree with that, Trini. Partly I don't, I'll be honest, because actually is if the players aren't good enough then he won't put them in. Now, Connor Coventry is not good enough to displace Declan Rice or Lucas Paquetta, in my opinion. So he goes out on loan. He, I mean, he's, he, I mean, to be honest, you look at someone like Flynn's come in and Flynn hasn't even broken into the first team. He, he's someone they've actually signed. Ollie Skulls, yes, I could see him, but actually, at the moment, we went and bought Emerson, uh, a 28-year-old Premier League experience and so they've gone there. So I totally agree. I think the fact is, if I if we were in, a, actually, I was going to say the same thing. Don't I? As 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 Trini said, I think if oh, not Trini, as Happy Emirates said, if we're in a relegation zone, if you're happy to play out the kids and then we lose because he's playing the kids because of the progression, it's it's an it's a unfortunately it's not a function of Moyes. I think it's a function also of the Premier League. The fact is. Is we don't have it. We haven't got the luxury to do that. When we do have the luxury to play a game like a dead rubber in the Europa Conference, like we've done, and then also, you know, if I, there may be one or two get a, get a run out on Monday. Then we do play the kids, uh, but it's I, and not necessarily for progression. But I think it's and and I agree with the sentiment. I know exactly what you'll say. You'll say we don't know until, we don't know how good they are until they've played. You're totally right. It's chicken. The whole thing's a chicken and egg thing. Told you. Are you trying to do anything with a beard? No, it's just got, got a fat chin. That's right. Uh, I've swum with Dave Dolphins before. Done it in, done it in Dubai. Uh, Newcastle played in the week. Must win at West Ham. Indeed, Kelly. Must win indeed. Um, we'll have we might have Kendron from who's Newcastle fan next week. What's dinner? Curry, as always. Friday, not curry. You've got curry. Uh, Friday kebab. Why extend commentary by another season when he won't get any chances? Because it means he's not going on a free transfer because his contract runs out at the end of the season. So it means he could, well, hopefully get some money out of him for him when he signs. That's what it is. Uh, you have to believe that Moyes knows who's ready for the step up. It's a big jump. It's a bigger jump than it always has been, it has been ever, I think, generally. Um, sorry, Moyes can't judge youth players. He did not give a start, was forced to. He cannot assess, so I do not trust his judgment on youth. It's not really... If they're not up for it, then why? Indeed. Yeah, fair enough. Do you need a linked European team to progress youngsters? Possibly. I mean, look, even look at Chelsea. I mean, they have some like, with their partnerships with um, Vitesse Arnhem and whatever. You know, they send their players out to there. That may well be the way to do it. I have no faith in Moyes when it comes to when it is youth. Even the ones he's bought, he gets rid of. If they're not good enough, they're not good enough. Um not only Moyes, Trini, also youth coaches may feel they're not ready to. I mean, at the end of the day, we would, you know, the likes of, I mean, we've got good football people in there. You know, we've got, you know, guys like Kenny Brown, who's a, who's a very well-respected coach. Mark Robson is a very well-respected youth team coach. Kevin Keane, very well-respected. Um, 
Potsy, Potsy's come through the ranks at West Ham. You know, so, you know, these guys, they know what it takes to play in the Premier League. They know what it is to break into the first team at West Ham. If they're, if you know, they're, they'll be in his ear to say, look, but look, at the end of the day, it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. We're only here chatting, so we can't really give that uh, too much of a, of a of a view, unfortunately. But I am going to look back and look at um, and look at past, you know, good golden eras at West Ham. So that ninety nine FA Cup U side, you know, going through that, how many of that actually broke in? Because there, there, and there's there, there's two there's two things. There's making your debut, and then there's being a consistent league player. That's the difference. So Moyes has made, as I said, Moyes has, has, made, has given more for, more academy players a first team start than any manager in since the early nineties. But not necessarily in the Premier League, and it's not necessarily in the Premier. But how many games they play in the Premier League subsequently? You know, he's, I think he's sixteen or eighteen academy players he's given first team chances to. Um, first team, you know, whether that, and, and that's basically the two Europa League games, to be honest, the Europa League game and the Europa Conference game. But it's it's a ne- it's the next stage. It's not about giving you a, but it's the next stage. So for example, Longello, for example, Longello came out a fantastic start, and then he just went completely off the rails. Went completely, off, you know, and maybe got. But then he, but then he's gone to Birmingham. He's doing really good there. We set the Arsenal we're upholding until the end of the season's cover. Uh, I think we need someone scrap. I tell you, this this is the point. This would make a massive difference. Scrap the twenty ones. Bats the combination so much better. Um, I totally agree. I totally agree. It was quite good. Moyes could drop it, drip feed him within. He's still young though, though, mate, isn't it? And 10 minutes for a left wing back is different than 10 minutes for a, for a forward, I think, in my in my opinion. I know what you're trying to say, and I totally agree. And I, I do agree. It'd be great for him. But who's benefit? He's dropping them in for the players. Is he dropping in for the players' benefit and development rather than the team team's benefit? That's the question. The team need to win games. So by giving Ollie Scars 10 minutes, will that just... What would that do? Would that give you? And I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Would that give you that, or would you, or is it to appease the fans? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing because I think it'd be great. Actually, I'm agreeing. I'd love him to play some more of the kids. But maybe is that my, my my fan side, my academy of football side, rather than me just wanting to get three points. I don't know. Feel for the youth team coaches should be given a try, but more is noise noise them. Uh yeah, you this is the final say. How many could deal with the likes of Har- I, I I agree. I agree. And to be honest, but there's no mechanism to let them do that. If you had the old old reserve league, then the chances are a De Bruyne might turn up in the reserves. Give himself 20 minutes. You know what I mean? So then they get the experience. Then it's less of a jump. The trouble is at the moment, it's such a jump from the 23s. And the thing is, everyone looks at it. Um, everyone looks at, oh, but we brought in Joe Cole. And that was under a different regime in terms of manager, granted, but also a different setup with the youth team in that you had the combinations. So it comes through from that. So I know what you mean, but it's um, it's it's a fascinating. We did a whole show about it before. It was fascinating. We had like Patty Holland on, who's a coach, and he agrees with what we what basically we're saying is it's too much of a step up for managers uh, from the twenty three or the twenty ones now to the first team. It's too much of a of a risk for managers to take. Whereas from the reserve team, they can see how they play with the likes of seasoned pros, and then it's less of a step. Uh, I do think if we're sitting comfortably, we could get higher than we should see. Yeah, I agree. I guarantee him always goes. If we still have some youth team, they'll be given a chance. I don't, Trini, I, I'll be honest. I don't think so. I think, you know, I think it's it's, it's, it's dependent about how well we're playing, in all honesty, and where we are in the league. And, and that's, and it is a results business. I don't, I wouldn't see if, if Pep Guardiola needs to win a game and he's got a Guardiola, not Guardiola, he's got, he's, and he's got a Gundogan, Gundogan at like 80% or a youth team kid. He's going to put Gundogan in because his experience, he needs to win the game anyway. But look, would you, uh, I'm a bit hot. That's why I've got the heating on and I've got a jump on. I know Trini, but I do feel the same. We, we overrate. I think we do as well. I, I definitely think we do because they're part of West Ham, the Academy. We have this sort of, uh, as I said, claret tinted, perception of what the what the academy was all about and how it used to be how it brought in the likes of you know jeffers and, and bobby moore and it brought in you know martin peters and it brought in you know the guy like the the likes of 
the modern times like Joe Cole and Declan Rice. And I think we still see that, you know, um, the trouble is, you know, they're, they're playing, you know, the 18s are playing fantastically in their youth games and they're like one 12 in a row. But, you know, I don't think you're going to, they're still under 18. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm that. Uh, Rooney's comments on how Moyes treats you says it all. It does, but I don't know. It has, it has to rotate more. I, I agree. You're in nothing flogging the same. But actually, ironically, I think we play we play better when we were having 13 players and flogging the life out of them. When we were playing Europa League and playing in the Premier League, we were doing all, we we're doing better than we were doing now. We've almost got two different sides. I don't know. Um, Seems to be playing within. Uh, Keith, thank you for the super chat as always. There is no reason why Moyes doesn't have younger on the bench. Then we have two 0 up. Give one or two. We've got to be, I, I, I totally agree, Keith. It'd be nice to get B2 up with 10 minutes left, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think, the, also, I think the trouble is you are now working with a situation where you've got a, we have a, a squad now, a squad of really good, um, you know, a stronger squad, I think, than we've had for maybe a couple of years. So now he's got seasoned professionals like Lanzini. And this, okay, here's a question for Happy Amaret. Okay. 10 minutes left. Does he bring on Lanzini for 15 minutes for Lucas Paqueta? Or does he bring on Schweier for 15 minutes? Or if Equa was still here, would he bring on Equa for 15 minutes? Does he bring on Ben Rama for 10 minutes? Or does he bring on Armstrong Ockerflick for 10 minutes? That, that's the and that, that's the thing that's the thing um interesting maybe playing for premier football most definitely is possible when you get relegated yeah i totally agree i totally agree he did he was he got his debut and so did um he did and so did uh under moisey uh jeremy and gakia got his debut i think at liverpool um so but those are the only ones in recent in uh well declan rice came on yeah that's sort of it uh aren't giving for many games of late cheeky last bid Foden, it's, look, Foden's one of the academies, not even getting the first. Mason Mount isn't getting many games at, at, at Chelsea. He was Conor Gallagher. Um, uh, that's not so do. Yeah, but got with Chelsea, Chelsea, no, Chelsea, not necessarily. They go out and buy loads of players. What's happened with that Mendy chap? Heard he turned, he turned down Bournemouth. Uh, well, apparently, he reckons he's coming to us. So we're doing no, Southampton, not Bournemouth. Uh, look at the quality of youngsters play alongside Pep. Uh, if I'm at the ground, it has to be Trini. My point is these teams win things and still give. Uh, well, the thing is they, they they have the luxury because, honestly, I think not all make it, but they are given the chance. Trini, I, I, I appreciate, I, I totally appreciate where you're coming from. I'm going to let... I'm going to have a look at some stats because I think sometimes we always take things in isolation and, you know, it's, it'll probably come out that we don't play as many youth team players as, as, um, and I think if we did, I might look at it in the league because a lot of those youth team players are given chances in the cup games, um, where then they have the, the luxury of putting De Bruyne and Haaland on the bench and bringing them on to win the game. I'm going to have a look at that. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a look. I'm gonna have a look because I'm I'm interested. As I said, I did the analy- I did the thing about Moisey, and he's 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 given more academy players uh, a a first team debut compared to any other manager from the early nineties onwards, from from Billy Bonds onwards, um, and that's in the Premier era. But that's that's what it is. It's frustrating. I agree, and quite sad. I do think I just aren't ready to be in the Prem. I I think it's a factor of a lot of things. Happy Emirate. Anyway, but it's been a lovely chat. Thank you. Obviously, we had, right at the beginning, we had Adam, uh, the Derby fan, talking about uh, Derby. Um, we've got uh, loads of stuff coming up today. We've got, I think, we've got Irish Tommy, um, Late Late Show tonight. We've got the press conference for the Derby game. We've also got stuff about, um, uh, what's it called? God, happy, um, happy, happy, I'm right. Um, yeah, to my mind. And we've got the... Uh, Hammers headlines, I forgot what it is. Also, the latest ep- episode of uh, the We Are West Ham podcast with Will and James is out now. So check that out on all your podcast things. If you want to listen to something rather than YouTube on Spotify, Apple Apple Podcasts, all that type of stuff, check it all out. Top guys, we'll get them on soon. And that's it, my friends. As I said, take care. Stay safe. If you hadn't got into bed with Spurs, we could have said, totally agree, totally agree um take care stay safe stay warm stay healthy stay humble keep the faith my friends uh give it a cheeky like if you want subscribe if you're new and i'll see you guys very very soon bye bye my friends bye bye